Hello friends, this is Growl. In this video, I'm going to go over my first impressions of the Evoker healer in Dragonflight for Mythic Plus. There's been highs and lows with this healer, at least in my mind. At first, I was really excited, but then after kind of seeing what some of the other healers got, I was a bit worried that Evoker wouldn't be doing that well. Now, I've sort of come full circle. I've gotten to play it in some keys, and that concern about it being not good has definitely been alleviated. In the current tuning, Evoker does like the highest DPS of any healer right now in the beta. You can blast huge AoE damage every 30 seconds with pretty consistent single target as well. Normally in these first impression videos, I talk about what's changed in the class, but since Evoker is brand new, we're going to have to start with the basics, so I'm just going to kind of explain some of the healing and some of the damage and how that works. Reversion is your mana efficient like heal over time spell. Depending on talents, it can actually do a ton of healing by itself. This is good because your main single target heal is Living Flame, and it's pretty weak compared to most other healers' direct heals. A lot of your single target healing actually comes from that reversion. Also, Evoker have other conditional and supplemental heals to back it up. For instance, Verdant Embraced is an instant cast direct heal that does a lot, but it also flies to your target. It's usually my burst heal of choice as long as I don't mind flying to the person. Time Dilation is a 1 minute cooldown external defensive. It stretches the damage the friendly takes over 10 seconds, giving you more time to heal them, sort of like how Brewmaster Stagger works. This is really strong for yourself or for DPS. It can be a little bit less effective for tanks though, unless you have a way to kind of help them out once that stagger starts kicking in. For AoE healing, it's all about those long channeled AoE heals. Dream Breath and Spirit Bloom are a huge part of the way you deal with pretty much all AoE damage. Each one is on a 30 second cooldown, so you have to be careful about using them too early if burst damage is coming up. This is where positioning can get difficult and you have to plan it out so that you have the full channel if you need to for one of the big spells. If there's heavy movement involved, you can use Tip the Scales, which is a two minute cooldown that makes your next empowered spell instant cast at its max level. This gives you a little bit of breathing room now and then, but generally I'm saving it for emergencies. Dream Breath is interesting because it always does the same amount of healing, but depending on how long you empower it for, it'll do more up front and less as a heal over time. This means actually you're only empowering it a single level and then you're just sending off the Dream Breath to put a really big hot on your entire party, even though it doesn't do that much up front. In emergencies though, you can choose to fully charge it if you need that instant heal. The DPS rotation is incredibly simple. You fully charge your Fire Breath, which not only deals big AoE damage, but also empowers your next Living Flame to cleave onto other targets. Then you simply spam Living Flame until your Fire Breath is up again. You can use Azure Strike as an instant cast filler for damage when you need to be on the move and you don't have a hover. That's pretty much it. The DPS rotation seems simple, but with all of the talents and passives, it actually does an incredible amount of damage. One important passive is Scarlet Adaptation. This stores up healing that you do, and then the next Living Flame that you use offensively, it'll add onto it and do bonus damage. There's definitely a lot more depth to the rotation that I'm alluding to in this video, but this is just meant to be an overview, not necessarily a guide. Alongside your mana, you also have to manage another resource called Essence. This just slowly comes back over time. There are a few talents that you can gain Essence, and it isn't really a huge part of your rotation. For healing, I like to use Echo as my spender. It duplicates the next spell you use onto the target that you put Echo on. This means you can put Echo on four people and then reversion your tank, and that reversion goes on your entire party. You also can use your Essence as a DPS spender for Disintegrate or an AoE heal Emerald Blossoms. These might be a bit more important in raids. However, in dungeons, I found myself mostly using Echo. The other two are pretty situational. Overall, I would say the Essence stuff is a little bit boring. There's only a few spells that you can use it on, and they don't feel particularly different or powerful, so it just ends up being a chore that you have to upkeep. I know there's going to be people in the comments talking about the Emerald Blossom build because there's a lot of talents that go with that. I think that's mostly going to be a raid thing, and although it could be a really super cool build, it's not something that I found particularly strong in M+. 
Although the essence spenders are kind of boring, the major cooldowns that Evoker has are actually really, really interesting. I found that when I was first starting off, I was getting really bad use out of pretty much all of them, but as I learned more, they became more and more powerful for me. Your big cooldown is Rewind, which puts a hot on your entire party based off of how much damage they took in the last five seconds. This is a really cool ability because it isn't necessarily something you can use in every scenario. You don't just press it and then it does a big heal. You have to think about how much damage that you've already taken and how much damage is left to come. Obviously, you can just send it if your party takes a big hit, but if they're not in danger, why not just save the use and then charge up a big party heal instead? Stasis is another cooldown. It's one of the capstones near the bronze side of the tree. It's a 1.5 minute cooldown, which stores the next three friendly abilities that you use. And then when you press it again, it repeats those abilities. This was something that took a bit of practice. It felt clunky at first. I would kind of just like press it and then do random heals and then press it again. But it ends up being a really strong healing cooldown if you use it right. Let's say I needed to do big group healing. I would often use my one single charge dream breath to get that big hot. Then I would charge up a Spirit Bloom for that big burst AoE heal, and then maybe throw out a Verdant Embrace or just a single target heal on someone who was low. It was a problem though because those were my big 30 second heal cooldowns and if the group damage was continually high, I'd sort of fall behind, I'd just be spamming Living Flame hoping for my Spirit Bloom to come back. With Stasis, however, you can store those big AoE heals for up to 30 seconds and then let them rip again when the party takes more damage. Evoker's healing style definitely reminded me of Shaman sort of in this way. The healing itself was really, really straightforward, but the skill in keeping your team alive was getting value out of those big cooldowns. So now that you kind of know what Evoker does, I'll talk a little bit about how the class felt and how it performed. This is the first new healer that's come out since I started playing WoW, and I'm pretty excited to learn it. I find learning new healers insanely fun. I've definitely been enjoying my time on Evoker for sure. The cooldowns are really cool, but I will say the rotation and sort of the feel of the class isn't quite for me. I really like having a class that's mobile, so being glued to the floor for three seconds at a time, like over and over again, can get on my nerves at times. You do have some mobility, but generally the mobility is you need to be using it. You're using the Verdant Embrace for the heal and you need to use the hover for certain movement things. You can't necessarily just use it for flexibility. Healing wise, I was a little worried. I was a little bit intimidated at first. I didn't want to bring Evoker into some of the harder keys. I wasn't confident that I could heal with it. But over time, I did gain a lot more confidence and I actually found it really fun to try and heal some of the hard bosses. There's definitely ones that will end up being really frustrating, ones that you have to heal through a lot of damage, but also there's tons of movement or people being spread out everywhere. However, there's also bosses where you have everyone stacked up nice and together and you just have to blast tons of healing and it feels really, really good to play. The biggest struggle that I had with Evoker for healing was honestly just the single target healing. Like, let's say my tank is taking a lot of damage. I have a few nice things I can use on him. I can cleanse his bleeds, which is nice. I can give him that time dilation. But if he's just consistently getting owned and I have to resort to using Living Flame spam, he's probably going to die. However, hopefully maybe there's some cool trinkets or new builds that people come up with that helps alleviate that problem. Or maybe you learn in certain dungeons that it's a problem and you kind of adjust accordingly. Damage wise, like I alluded to earlier in the video, Evoker just blasts. Evoker is doing the highest overall damage as a healer in the beta right now. The damage rotation is super simple, but the numbers are huge. The tier set gives you occasional instant living flame casts, and alongside that Scarlet Adaptation passive that I mentioned, charging up, it means that you can just kind of throw in a few living flames here or there on a boss fight and still do pretty good damage. On big AoE packs, Flame Breath with Living Flame just does so much damage. I'm not sure if it's gonna get tuned. Personally, I think it's just a tad too strong. If you are the kind of person that doesn't like to do DPS as a healer, honestly, I challenge you to play Evoker and try it. It's so simple, it's not complicated at all, but it just feels so good. The numbers are huge, and I know it's gonna convert you to the dark side. You don't need to do the damage for healing, it's not necessarily part of the healing kit, but it's just so straightforward and simple and rewarding. Now the big question that everyone always asks, could this healer be the meta healer even with a short range? I think almost certainly the answer is yes. 
At a high end, it's easy to come up with strategies and play around your healer, as long as it's only a few boss fights, especially when I'm seeing a lot of melee DPS in the meta, it's pretty simple to have everyone sort of stacked up in the same area. 90% of the fights felt totally fine with Evoker, and I didn't even notice the range problem. However, this is the meta healer, this is the high end healer, right? If you find yourself in a pug with that hunter that barely can get dressed in the morning, and every single boss he just wants to explore looking for Narn you have to track him down, it might be a little bit harder to heal. Evoker does bring Lust in a kick, so even if it's a challenge to heal pugs, it may be really desired. It might end up sort of being like the new Shaman, how Shaman was in Shadowlands, where we don't need to worry about Lust, we have an extra kick, like let's just expect to have one of these in our group most of the time. So I'm not really too sure how it's going to end up. It's really up in the air. I don't know how it's going to perform because, well, it's only in the beta right now. If you think you like the class though, and the numbers are tuned right, I'm pretty certain that you'll be able to make it work. And that pretty much wraps up my thoughts on Evoker and Healing M Plus and Dragonflight. It was a bit different from my other videos since it's completely a new class, there's nothing really that changed, but I hope it helps you if you're wondering about the state of Evoker or considering playing it in the expansion. If you're looking for more Dragonflight Mythic Plus content, definitely subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting regularly up until launch and of course during the expansion as well. I'm hoping to reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of the year, so I appreciate your support. Good luck with your healing adventures and happy keying, friends.